Welcome back to Utah SEO Ninja. Today we're going to be talking about Weebly SEO, which is basically how to optimize your Weebly website so that way it appears in Google search for your specific keywords. Two quick things before we get started. First, stick a link to your website in the comments section and tell me a little bit about what you do. This is a great way to gain a little bit of traffic and then also to see what other Weebly users are doing with their websites. Second, I need to give you a little bit of a disclaimer. SEOs can be a very technical and complicated process, especially when it's done correctly. And so there's no way that I can condense an entire process that takes you know weeks and months to do into a 15 minute video. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the three first things that you need to do into three basic steps for any sort of website optimization. Now, if you wanna learn more about some of the in-depth process behind SEO, then stick around to the end of this video. We're putting together a training program. We're looking for some beta testers and we're gonna talk about it there. So this kind of video works best when you can follow along. Now, the way that I had this put together is you can watch the screen here and see what I'm doing, but if you want to, you can also just open up a second window and leave me in the background, listen to my sensual voice, and kind of follow along with what it is that I'm talking about. So the first thing you'd want to do is go down to the comments section and click on the first link. That will take you to kwfinder.com. Now, I do have an affiliate link for this if you guys want to support the channel a little bit. This is my absolute favorite keyword research tool in the entire world. Now, a keyword is a word or a phrase that somebody uses to find something online. Like, you may have searched for Weebly SEO to find this video. That's the keyword that I'm targeting here. It has 880 searches a month, and the average score of the websites currently ranking on page one of Google is 28 out of 100. And you can see who's currently ranking on page one for those keywords. So if we do a quick search for this, then we can see that the information coincides pretty well. WeeblySEO.com right here. If we scroll down, we have the three YouTube videos. Who's this handsome devil? So right now I am on page one of Google, but I'm trying to get two videos on here instead of just one. Now the difficulty score is a little bit deceptive. What it specifically refers to is the number and quality of backlinks that a website has. Another way to look at this number is to give you an idea about how expensive it's gonna to be to compete for that keyword. Now, since you're a brand new website, you're gonna have a score of one, which means that you aren't competitive at all. You're basically a blank slate. And so you're going to rely very heavily on your on-page optimization. That's what we're talking about right now. And so when you're searching for your keywords, you want to look for ones that have the lowest possible difficulty level with the highest possible monthly traffic. So for example, the keyword SEO is a 75, which is pretty high. But if we go for Salt Lake City SEO, which is where I live, we're pretty close. Now we're looking at a 19 instead of a 75, and we still get 3,000, almost 4,000 searches a month. And so while I was preparing this video and I realized how easy of a keyword this was, then I actually went and I built myself a page on my website so that I could target this keyword. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. So once you have a list of about four or five keywords and what you're gonna be looking for again, look at the difficulty, look at the amount of traffic that you receive, then also look and see how closely they relate to the products or services or the information that you're sharing on your website. So the more closely those things align, then the better and the easier it's going to be when you're trying to rank for the specific keywords. The other thing that you want to consider when you're choosing your keywords is something called buyer intent. For example, if somebody's searching for Salt Lake City SEO, they're probably going to be looking for SEO services or for an SEO company that's based in or around Salt Lake City. Technically speaking, I'm not in Salt Lake City, but we're pretty close. And so we know that people who are searching for this keyword are going to be looking for the kind of services that we offer, and we're not going to be generating useless traffic. So just something else to keep in mind. But once you have a list of about four or five keywords, then it's time to head back to Weebly. So we're going to go back to the Weebly SEO keyword for just a moment. There are three places within Weebly where you can work on your website's SEO. The first area is the page builder. So just this right here. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we're using the keyword on the site itself. So for example, we're talking about Weebly SEO. We're going to use it up here as the site title. We're going to make sure that it's going to show up over here. Again, this is going to be another title. We're going to try to use those keywords within the body of the text. So here's SEO, Weebly. If we scroll down a little bit more, then we're talking again, SEO, Weebly, and then we're using these keywords repeatedly so that way Google knows the keywords that we want to talk about are Weebly SEO. And here it is again, free Weebly SEO tutorials, and so on. So that's the first thing. Now, the other thing that you want to do is if you do have any pictures on your website, then make sure to click them and go to advanced. And then there's an option right here, it will say alt text. Now, alt text is a bit of code that's used by screen readers. And basically what that means is for people who are visually impaired who come to your website, then they have a program that will read all the text that's on the website for them. And when it comes to a picture, then it will go to that alt text. 
And so for example, the alt text for this particular button says Weebly SEO course sign up button. So they know that particular image is of a Weebly SEO course sign up button. And so this is really important for two reasons. First, it makes your website more accessible. And second, because the Google robots can actually read that information, they can read that text. And so when we are able to properly tag our images and properly describe those images, then that's also just going to help the YouTube robots to see that our website really is about the specific subject and that will help us to rank a little bit higher. So make sure that you do that, it's really important. The second place that we're gonna work on our website is under the Pages tab. Click on Pages, select the page you wanna work on, scroll down to SEO settings. This is where we adjust how the site appears in Google search. Your page title, which is right here, is the clickable title of your link in Google. So when you do your search, it's this right here. The page description is the text that appears underneath that link, this part. One of the important things to consider when you are working on these two sections of your site is that first you wanna make sure you're using your keyword because again, we're specifically telling the Google robots, this is what our website is about. But one of the other things that we need to remember is that this is one of the human factors that we need to consider. When somebody's searching for this keyword, you know, sometimes they'll just go in and click on whatever's in the number one spot, but usually they'll go through and they will read these at least a little bit and try to figure out which of all these sites is gonna have the best information or that best answers the question that they have. And so make sure that your page description as well as your page title really speak to the user and tell them that you have the information that they're looking for. Coming back to Weebly, the next section that we have is Meta Keywords. Now, this section actually isn't used by Google anymore. In fact, it's been this way for a couple of years now. The only reason that it's actually still here on the platform is because a lot of people that don't read up on this industry news don't know that this was discontinued, and so they get mad when they can't find it. You can add keywords here, but it's not gonna make any difference either positively or negatively. Uh, I just kinda see it as a waste of time and I don't do anything with it. Now we have three more options here. The footer and header code sections are there for tracking and embedding and any sort of necessary code. So things like Google Analytics, things like Google Search Console, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Uh, you can also use it for like uh, Facebook Messenger bots if you wanna have a bot pop up on a specific page or any other kind of app or integration that you want to appear on a specific page. This is where you would do that. And in just a second, I'll show you how to do that in the entire website. But before we do this, one last little thing, you'll notice down here at the very bottom, then you have the option to hide this page for search engines. You would use this option for something like a thank you page, so that way you don't get random traffic showing up and messing up any goal conversion that you have set up. You could also use it for something like a download page if those downloads are supposed to be behind a uh, subscription wall. So like they wouldn't be able to download or find that page until they have subscribed to your newsletter or something along those lines. And then the final part of our on-page optimization is gonna be under the settings tab. Settings, SEO. You'll recognize some of these same options from what we we're just looking at. We have our site description again, our footer code, our header code, and then the option to hide the entire website from Google or not. This is basically the same thing as what we were just looking at. The only difference is that this will work as the default for your website, whereas what we're looking at before is for individual pages. So this is where I post like my analytic information and my search console information. Just that way it's site-wide and I don't have to worry about going through and adding it to every page. Now, before we move on to indexing, there's just one more thing that I wanted to mention, and that's to make sure that your description and your titles for each page is unique. You don't wanna just copy paste the same description and titles because every page is going to have specific and unique content to it. And so it makes more sense to have that be a little diversified. And especially if you're gonna be targeting several keywords, sometimes it makes sense to have one keyword or one set of keywords on one page and then another set of keywords on another. And so you wanna optimize those pages differently. So try to actually describe the content of that page. So try to actually describe the site content and then to also tell the user why they should visit your website instead of all the others. Okay, now that all that's done, the next thing that we need to do is to tell Google that we're ready for them to come and scan the website. To do this, you'll wanna follow the link that I have down in the comments and this will take you to the Google Search Console. You'll need a Gmail account to log in or you'll want to create an account. And you'll also need to add your website called a property. And so what they'll do is they'll ask us to confirm that we own this website. For Weebly websites, I like using the HTML code verification option. What you wanna do is select that option, they're gonna give you a code, and then you'll go back to Weebly, and then you just paste that code right here under your settings where we just were. You can see I actually have mine right here, and you guys can see that. Make sure to hit save and then publish the site, and then go back to Search Console and click Verify. 
and you should be good to go and see a page kind of like what we're looking at over here. From here, what we need to do is we're going to click on sitemaps, and we want to add a new sitemap. And this is actually really easy, where it asks you to submit the new sitemap, simply type in sitemap, no spaces, dot xml, and then click submit. This tells Google that you have created a new website and for them to come and to scan the website and then to index it. Now indexing is when the site actually starts to appear as a search result. Now this doesn't put you at the top of Google right away, but this is how the process starts. In regards to how long it takes the scan and indexing to actually go through and finish, sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's a couple days, sometimes it's a week. It really depends on how big the website is and how busy they are. It can take a little bit longer and that's normal. You have to remember that they are trying to scan all the billions of websites on the internet and it takes a little bit of time. And that's the basic process for optimizing a website. Now there are some additional steps that you can take for this. You can set up something called a NAP, which is the name, address, phone number, and make that consistent across the entire website. You can also do things like your schema markups, where again, you're using your NAPs and you are adding specific code to the website, uh, telling Google about, you know, this is the company's address, this is the company's phone number, this is the company name, things like that. And again, that's code that you had to add straight into the website itself. And it can be a little bit of a drawn out and complicated process. But again, this is the simple basic version of it. Typically, we actually spend about a week going through and optimizing everything on a page, doing all of our keyword research, making sure that our keyword density ratios are, are acceptable and you know doing readability tests and things like that. So like I said, it, it can be significantly more complicated but this will get you guys started. So we're going to start with this. The next step, and unfortunately this is one of the places where you're going to want to hire a professional to work on your website just because this is where things could potentially go wrong and cause a lot of trouble for your website. If you just go willy-nilly and you're, you know, you could potentially mess something up pretty, pretty gravely. But that is to start doing backlink campaigns, starting to build up local citations. And then we also like to do some paid ads in order to test the website and get some ideas as far as our conversion rates and things along those lines. Now, this part of the process is significantly more complicated and it's also significantly more expensive. Doing all the on-page optimization here, you don't really spend any money on it. It's mostly just an investment of time. Whereas a backlink can cost anywhere from $50 to $5,000. And that's not an exaggeration. Like that's the normal prices for what we look at when we're doing backlink campaigns. And the thing is you usually need a lot of backlinks in order to rank for any sort of competitive keyword. If we go back over here to Keyword Finder, we can actually see the number of backlinks that a lot of these websites have. So Barking Frog SEO has 3,000 backlinks. These guys have one. These guys have 189. These guys have 3,000, 117, and so on. And that's just for the specific page. Keyword Finder has a couple of extra tools that they've included. And so let me show you these real quick. We can see BarkingFrogSEO.com has 3,855 backlinks, and we can actually see what all those backlinks are. And then we can see the same information over here using the new site profiler option tool, which is actually really neat. And again, we can see all that information. So we can see their scores, we can see where their traffic is coming from, we can see what keywords they're ranking for. And these are the total number of backlinks that they've received overall. So this is saying they actually had a few more backlinks not too long ago, but they started losing some. You can see that here as well. Uh, they just recently lost 229 backlinks a couple days ago. So something's going on that's causing them to lose backlinks, and this will actually cause them to lose rankings as well. And then we can see where all of the uh, backlinks are coming from. So as you can see, backlinks are a very important part of all of this. It's like the next step. It's how your website gains authority. But again, you can potentially cause a lot of problems with your website if you go and you buy like backlinks off of Fiverr then there's a very good chance that that will actually cause your website to get penalized. Also, technically speaking, any sort of, anytime you try to manipulate your search rankings within Google is technically against the terms of service and it can again lead to a penalization where your website will either be limited or it will be completely removed from the index and you won't get any more traffic. At least not from Google itself. On the positive side of this, normally a website will start to generate backlinks organically over time. It's just a very slow process. To give you an idea, this is one of the websites that I've been working on for years. And you know, I've never specifically went out to build backlinks for it. You can see I do have 49 backlinks now. And I have a little bit of a score. My website's now ranking somewhere between an 8 and a 12. And I rank for some keywords and I get a little bit of traffic from this. 
So it will happen eventually over time as you share the website, as you talk about the website, and as you interact with other websites in your niche. So don't freak out if you're patient and if you're willing to wait a couple of years for things to really start to pick up, then this is probably going to be the best option for you. This is also the only purely white hat or 100% in compliance with Google's uh, terms of service method. So this is one of the things that you want to keep in mind. So what do we do here? What's the next step? You can either hire an SEO agency like myself to come in and work on your website, or as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're actually working on a training program specifically for Weebly websites, as you may have guessed from the title of the website that we've been working on. What I want to do is I want to build a course that teaches you how to get backlinks, how to build citations, and that goes into a little bit more detail about the on-page optimization. So again, talking about the schema markups and the naps and everything else, and then also talking a bit more about how to improve your conversion rate, which is how you can turn a site visitor into a customer. Now, we have been working with some people one-on-one -on -one to practice the training material, and the results so far have really been outstanding. And we're actually in the last phases of our beta tests for the course before we start recording content and uploading it to this platform. But before we do that, we would like to have another three or four people go through our training just so we can make sure that we have everything exactly the way that we want before we launch. Now, if you're interested and if you decide to sign up, then what you'll get is one-on-one -on -one training with me over Skype. You get full access to the course as well as any updated or new information we add to that course in the future at no extra cost. And I think the best part is that the beta test is actually cheaper than the full course once we launch it. And so it's a pretty darn good deal. Now, I'm not some super millionaire SEO, but I am generating about $150,000 a month in leads for my clients every month. And I think that I'm the most experienced SEO when it comes to working specifically with Weedly, as most of my colleagues won't even touch it, which I think is kind of dumb, but you know, to each their own. So if you would like to be one of those people who participates in our beta program, then you can shoot me an email at tristan at utahseo.ninja. We'll set up a time to chat about the program and about your business. It's no obligation, but you should feel totally obligated. So again, if you're interested in participating in this program, then please let us know. We'd be really happy to work with you guys. Now, if you do have any other questions about Weebly SEO, make sure to stick them in the comment section. Don't forget to share a link to your site and tell me a little bit about your website and what it is you guys are doing. I really can't wait to see what you're working on and I'm excited about it. And I will see you guys in the next video.